Um, Kreuzer, welcome back to this final session in the di uh, digital innovation stage. Uh, we're ready now for the final panel discussion, uh, which I'm going to chair. Uh, the title of the uh, discussion is Connecting You, Your Business, and Wales to the World. Uh, I'd like to invite our panel members to come to the stage. They are Simon Jones of Welsh Government. Uh, we're also delighted to welcome Ed Hunt from BT, uh, Spectrum Internet's Giles Phelps and Chris Williams of Next Generation Data. Would you give them a round of applause as they take their seats? Uh, Wales, we like to think, I guess, is becoming a truly digital uh, nation, a country where businesses can flourish and do business with, uh, with anyone, anytime, anywhere around the globe, if you're old enough to remember the Martini adverts. Um, underpinning this desire is the creation of a world-class digital infrastructure, one that is globally competitive, flexible, and forward-looking. Whether you're a multinational corporation looking to relocate headquarters or a small business looking to benefit from superior connectivity, um, this panel is going to examine um, the suggestion that Wales has the digital infrastructure to support your ambitions. Um, you've sat so patiently through so many seminars over the last couple of days, or just today for those of you who are just here today, um, but this is your session. You've worked out by now there are no fixed questions or, or plants in the audience. It's all, it all riffs as you, as you want to take it. So. The panelists are yours. Uh, it's the usual convention. If I can ask you to uh, put your hand up uh, and uh, tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, and um, uh, keep your question just to, to one question. Uh, it's quite an interesting makeup, the audience here over the last couple of days. There are technical geniuses who are leading fascinating organizations, and there's dimwit journalists like me who, frankly, much of the time don't know what you're talking about. So don't scare us too much with your questions. Um, but if there's anyone in the audience who wants to kick off, uh, first of all, and ask our first question, I would be very grateful. We've got some uh, microphones roving. Where's our head of sound? Our head of sound, oh, that, that's, that's a short jump for you. Good afternoon, good evening. Tell us who you are, your name, and your question, please. Hi, uh, my name's Steve Davis from Next Generation Data. And the question is, is there enough competition in connectivity in Wales? Um, before I throw it over to them, um, what's your answer? What do you think? Uh, fundamentally, I don't think there is. I think prices are relatively high compared to, compared to the rest of the world. And I think more competition in Wales will help bring prices down, and particularly for businesses. And what's your experience? Just tell us a bit more. Sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm, I'm just interested in your experiences. Um, well, if we look at lease line services in particular, uh, I work for NGD, where next gen, I'm a colleague of Chris Williams's. So uh, this isn't a setup, honestly. Um, so we sell a lot of data center services, and a key part of that is the cost of connectivity. And the cost of connectivity can be twice to three times as much as the actual data center services that it supports. So to us, it's a, key, it's a, it's a disenabler. It's an anti-competitive thing that stops people using data center services and getting access to their cloud-based services. What would be your solution if miraculously uh, you could fix it tomorrow? Uh, more fiber on the ground would be one option. Um, uh, slightly different technology solutions, microwave, things like that. But I think fundamentally everything comes from BT OpenReach, with the exception of uh, Virgin. So I think more competition would just help drive prices down. Steve, thank you very much for your question. Now, who shall we start with here, do you think? Um, Ed Hunt from BT. Uh, we need, we right. need to, okay, we easy, need, easy question to, uh, uh, to start with. We need to break you up, really. That's the real <laughs> question. He's very polite, Steve, isn't he? What we need is to break BT up and make it all more competitive. So, so, so I think the point on um, high-end high connect, business connectivity um, we have commissioned some research. I don't think it's been released into the public domain yet, but uh, our Ethernet op offering is amongst the cheapest in Europe and has the best service levels. So I'm not sure we're as badly off maybe as some people uh, uh, believe we are. And uh, there is competition in that uh, Ethernet market space, particularly from the likes of uh, Virgin Media. From, a, uh, from an SME point of view, well, the project that uh, Welsh Government are funding, and uh, along with BT, 
I think, is fixing the connectivity uh, issues throughout Wales for uh, SMEs and the, uh, the competition uh, uh, landscape, if you like, across uh, Wales is going to be extremely vibrant. There are hundreds of ISPs oper operating on BT's network and if you're in the middle of Paris, you will be paying the same prices for connectivity as you would be if you were sat in uh, the middle of Mayfair. So uh, I, I don't think the, uh, the picture is, and, and we, that, that rural rollout I can talk a little bit more if somebody's bound to ask me about not spots in Wales. Those rural not spots are getting fewer and further between. I expected you to say exactly that, curiously, um, but it is interesting that your question, Steve, was, has been raised by a number of people I've talked to here today. Let's hear some more from the panel. Uh, Chris Williams, w what do you make of Steve's question? I'm a colleague of Steve's to declare an interest. Um, we don't mind. No. Um, this, is, this isn't FIFA. Don't worry about that sort of thing. <laughs> um, I think the answer is it, it depends on the scenario that's in place for the customer. Um, for the vast majority of services, there are you know, a, a high number of, of telecoms providers operating in Wales. You can, you can obtain a broad range of services. Um, we certainly don't encounter any, any problems in connecting our customers to one another or to their customer base. Um, you are always, the, the mantra is always, I guess, that, that improved competition can decrease prices. So I think that's always one to, to consider and there's a, I guess a telecoms regulator who considers that on a, on a general basis. Um, to take it to a very specific level, uh, and uh, you know, I do encounter sometimes, is when, so we're a data center company. So a data center is, is a very large property, effectively, just a home for computers, a home for servers, a home for communications equipment. So, so we do need to move around data uh, very fast. And it's when we get to these sort of higher bandwidth connections, when you're looking for, for the type of connection we term dark fiber connectivity, then you know, perhaps there, there are, um, in, in the Welsh context, rooms to, to expand that. And I know that these things are being considered. So, so the, the analogy is, in a way, um, you know, in Wales, you know, in this venue, if you think about it, is, is located here because we've got the M4 motorway, access to the M5, and these dark fiber connections are the motorways of, of internet connectivity. And the more you have of those, in a sense, the more capacity you've got, the more accessible you are. So certainly, if you wanted Wales to be you know, better than any other nation in the world, I would suggest that's one area where you might look for improvement. Thank you. Giles. Well, I think uh, I can probably answer this question quite simply in that um, if we wanted to keep prices quite high, we say keep the competition out. So I could say for us to make more money, I, yes, there's plenty of competition because without it, uh, we don't have to reduce prices. Um, so if I was to morally answer that question, I would say increased competition will reduce prices. I am very aware that, yes, we've had some experiences in the States recently, and it will be probably surprise many people. The cost of connectivity in the States is exorbitant. It's horrendous. Um, and if you think we have a problem over here, uh, I would say try and look at the States because it definitely isn't rosy over there. Um, having said that, if we want to provide services and we want to offer ultra high performance services, then it is better to have more competition. It would be great to get access to, to things like dark fiber. It would be nice maybe if OpenReach opened their network to dark fiber and that would uh, probably make things quite easily, easy. I'm not so much of a, a, a big fan pushing for the breakup of, of BT because I think there are potential problems with that right now um, if that were to happen and it might make actually the problems worse. I just think it would be great to encourage more providers to come to Wales and put more fiber in the ground. Thank you. Um, Simon. Uh, yeah, I, th I think competition is, is clearly uh, important, but actually I think uh, diversity of supply is also important. Um, just, you know, BT, I think, provide, a, provide a, a, an excellent service by kind of international benchmarks, but, but, but a sole provider of infrastructure uh, is, is, is not enough for, for certain businesses. Now, most businesses, actually, it doesn't really matter for, uh, particularly. But in the data center market in particular, I'd have thought that diversity of supply 
is critically important. And if you look uh, at maps of the UK where, where there's uh, high concentrations of data centers, it's around London, where there, are, where there is diversity of supply and competition of, of access to, to fiber networks. So I, you know, I think we, we probably aren't as well served in Wales as we could be. And we're certainly not as well served as uh, places like the southeast of England when it comes to that competition and diversity of infrastructure supply. That isn't to denigrate what we've got at the moment, um, I think we've, you know, we've, 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 we've got a, we, you know, by international comparisons, we've, we're, we're, we're pretty well served in, in Wales. But, but if we really want to compete with the best in the world, competition and diversity of infrastructure supply, I think, are really important. And, that, and you know, the, the, the whole issue around dark fibre is it allows other operators to be able to, to, to build networks. Um, I think there are, there are things which, which we as government are, are involved in, and we may, we may come on to some of these things through some of the other questions, but uh, things like the internet exchange that we've, that we've opened in Cardiff are a, are a big part of, of trying to encourage that competition and diversity. I'm sure Giles will, will talk uh, to that later. Um, we, we're doing some work around um, opening up our our uh, motorway network and potentially offering the motor the verges of the motorway network to operators who want to come and build uh, new fiber optic networks now we're not going to we're not going to invest in that but we are going to give the opportunity to the market for for the market to be able to respond and if the market feels that there's an opportunity here um, we, we will be able to give them a kind of right of way which links up all of the uh, all of the communities in South Wales and North Wales very, very briefly, because I want to come back to Steve for a last word. I just want to echo. So I'm working with an American. So our data center is based in Wales. We are in the, the county borough of Newport. So we, we are facing the competition from London. And, you know, in effect, we're part of Wales' development um, as our business grows. Um, I was just going to mention this, this concept of diversity of supply and its importance. I'm working with an American company at the moment. They serve the global insurance industry. They're looking to put very high-performance computing into Wales. And it, it, so the, the, the end user, the insurance company, would tap into their database and would be able to assess risk as the basic of their service. Um, but that point about diversity, when they want their communications links, they want two separate communications links. They have to be routed diversely to follow completely separate network paths. And in their opinion, now whether that's right or wrong, they want two different network providers, two different carriers. That's their own you know, in, uh, organizational risk analysis, but it does endorse, I think, what Simon's saying, that you, in this enterprise class level of businesses, you do sometimes come across this. So therefore, I would agree it's a vital part of our infrastructure. But haven't you got that in uh, South Wales already? Sorry, I'm just saying, we, we have it. it. I'm just, in the context of this particular customer, that's what they wanted. You, you certainly do have it, exactly. There are more than one provider, certainly. And BT, just to say it, was the... the, the the provider, they're an American organization, it's the provider they're most comfortable with because of that brand name and, and credibility you have, so they're certainly working with you on that. Thank you. Uh, let me come back to Steve for uh, a last word on, uh, on what you've heard. Uh, yeah, very... Hello? Yeah, I've got you. Yeah, very interesting, gentlemen. Thanks for your comments. Um, I sympathize with BT's position because they are upgrading a, an aging infrastructure. I mean, some of the copper in the village where I live, it's got to be about 55 years old, at least. Um, but I just kind of feeling that the more competition, the more dark fiber that's out there, makes it better for businesses. So, you know, the more the merrier, I guess. Thank you very much. I'm going to, I'm going to move on, if, if it's OK, because otherwise we'll end up talking on one question for, for the whole session. Um, let, thank you very much for your question. Let me bring in uh, some more thoughts on this, or someone who wants to take us on to uh, another question. Anybody else want to come in on this uh, particular question before we, uh, before we move on? No? OK, thank you very much. Let me bring in the gentleman on the front here. Um, a microphone is being run to you now. Look at this extraordinary athleticism. Um, tell us your name, sir, your company, and your question. Um, my name is Steve Jones. company is branching out Europe-based here in Newport. Um, it's with regards to the question on internet exchanges, and there's, a, there's always a, a supply and demand aspect to this. Internet exchange is dominated by London. Manchester is second. Companies are going into Amsterdam rather uh, for, for diversity. What, if any, are the plans to, for, to help Wales PLC from uh, creating a real internet exchange that creates real value here, and that means connecting to the US? Transatlantic cables to the US is what customers, international customers, want. 
So there's diversity of supply, just as being mentioned. Chris Williams, first of all. Um, I think the, the internet exchange is a very positive development. I'm not personally deeply involved with it, but it certainly adds another layer to Wales's infrastructure. Um, I would agree with that. Um, the ability for two, effectively what happens at the moment, in a lot of cases, I'm not saying it happens in all, is that if you want to communicate potentially between the south of Newport and the north of Newport, your traffic might be going to London and then coming back again. So you've got this massive boomerang, a bit, a bit of a latency issue, not too much, but the system is architected where London is the center point. And the, the internet exchange will change that and improve the service and so forth. Um, on your point about transatlantic connectivity, just to separate it out, that is something that we in the data center offer already, in a sense. It's, it's, it's specific, in a sense, to our location and perhaps a number of others, where we work with a certain fiber provider, and they run their fibers from the data center to the, the west coast of, of uh, England, which then go out into the Atlantic, because the major submarine cable route is that way. We see it as an advantage, so therefore I would say, you know, extending that to f other locations, to, to beyond just our data center, I can understand why people would want that. I think it's a, a good part of the infrastructure. Thank you, Giles. Um, okay, as one of the uh, as one of the uh, joint founders, I suppose, of the Internet Exchange, or being very heavily involved in setting it up, um, the, the main focus is, um, as as we heard, was as keeping lack tra traffic local. Um, and we don't want traffic going all the way back to London just to come back to Wales. So that's a, a very important part. It is, an essentially, it is essentially a meet me point for all the service providers and content providers and, and, and anybody with a digital business potentially that can join that, that helps local businesses and local traffic. Um, with the transatlantic link, it's just another thing that touches upon resilience as well as speed. There's a potential performance benefit um, if, we again, we don't have to send traffic to London and then from London back over to, to the States. So it adds a, the ability to run faster connections, but it also gives us, again, an additional resilience. It's a different route, so it gives us that, that performance and resilience. Um, let, let's have Ed next, Ed Hunt from BT. Um. I think the, the, the uh, introduction of the Internet Exchange and a number of the other initiatives that are going on, particularly from, um, from Simon's department, sorry Simon, so a, a plug for you, is really just opening Wales up for business. So the fact it's there, I think, is, uh, is, is great for Wales. We've made some investments around in um, central Cardiff in the same building as the, um, uh, uh, the Internet Exchange around uh, what's something called a Nexus node, which uh, media companies are able to get uh, uh, to, to, to transport their programs over to LA or Sydney or any of these other media hubs around the world instantaneously in broad broadcast quality. Um, I do sometimes question mine some of the, uh, I mean, we need more dark fiber, we need more transatlantic links. I, I sort of question with the demand versus supply conundrum here. That what problem are we actually solving by, uh, by, by some of these sort of solutions? I wonder, is this, is this being infrastructure-led as opposed to being demand and economics-led? Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll leave you with, uh, with that. <laughs> okay. Um, Simon, uh, a final thought from you. Uh, uh, so I guess I should take a slightly different view to Ed on that. Um, so, so I think, actually, we've got the opportunity with, with the advent of the, uh, with the, of the IX to, to really... Um, uh, build, a, build a new proposition for investors in Wales when it comes to international connectivity. If you, th if you look at where we are on a map, we're, we're probably, where we're sitting now is probably, what, 30 miles away from a whole load of international cable landing points in North Somerset, maybe 90 miles away from a whole load down in Bude. Uh, and yet, in order for us to be able to get access to that lot, we've got to send traffic to London and back, as, as has been mentioned. Um, we should really be capitalising on that to be able to bring businesses into South Wales uh, and, and present a proposition to the outside world that will be unique in, in the UK as, you know, to, to kind of transform the attractiveness of South Wales as an investment destination. So I've been doing a lot of work with uh, uh, organisations in the finance and professional services sector for whom this is extremely interesting. Uh, data center operators, th those kinds of organizations in the ICT sector, that's an extremely interesting proposition. But it is a bit chicken and egg. You know, we can say to them, uh, well, we could do this if you wanted us to, or you could make this happen if you came and, 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 and located here. But actually, in order for them to come and locate here, we, we need to make this stuff 
happen. So I, so I disagree with Ed, actually. There, there probably is a supply side thing before the demand side thing kicks in. Um, so we are actively pursuing a number of opportunities there. It's probably a bit too early for us to, to go into detail about that, but I think over the next few months there'll be some significant announcements uh, which, will, uh, which will satisfy perhaps the, uh, the questioner. Do you want to tell us any more? Uh, not, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve, let's just come back to you just for a moment and a quick thought on, on what you've heard, and then I'll come to other people. Uh, just put your hands up and we'll run microphones to you now. Uh, Steve, just come back briefly. Okay, uh, I'm not anti-English and I'm not anti anti-London. However, <laughs> why does everything have to go back to London? Um, most of the content that's consumed is in the US. So why... The Irish can do it. Why can't we? Ed? Why does it matter? Why does it matter? Mm. Financial services institution, microsecond. Microseconds matter. It's not instantaneous from Cardiff. It's, nothing is instantaneous because there's always latency. So if you can cut down a few milliseconds or microseconds of latency, that can make a decision on whether financial services do a data center here or um, um, Dublin. Uh, yes, but you've got financial services companies all over the UK where they still have to tran tr transfer data over, over vast distances before they get to the... Uh, the, the Just one thing to say on this as well. There's, we've had comments about competition and do we actually need it, but we, we work in a very digital economy now and things move very fast. What we don't want to do is wait until it becomes a problem because by that time we're too late. So to a certain extent, we're anticipating demand and that's a good thing. You know, thinking ahead and being looking into the future is a good thing. And I think it's really important that we do that rather than just saying, well, we'll wait till it becomes a problem and then we'll think about doing something. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for your question. Yes, let me run a microphone to you because um, it'll be easy to hear from. Just tell us who you are, your organisation, and, uh, and where you're from. Uh, my name's Gary Thompson. Uh, I, I mean, work for myself, but what I just wanted to add was in terms of what Simon's been saying and, and Giles is saying there is is 100% right. Going back in 2004, so yeah, 2004 when I worked in the Northwest for the Regional Development Agency, there's a submarine cable which comes in there into Southport. It was actually a distressed asset. It had been uh, built at a cost of a billion and bought by a venture capital organization in America for 17 million. I did some work on that in terms of the impact on the Northwest economy. So the impact, what we calculated was about up to about a billion pound. But further work, you know, given the example of financial services, what our colleagues mentioned over there, when I added together the costs of connectivity, the costs of people in terms of whether they're doing high, you know, in high school jobs, and then the costs of actual, you know, desks, bums on seats in terms of property, because you've got to house people somewhere. Well, that was 50% less than London. Now, you know, then figures would be the same today, maybe slightly different. So coming back to the point of, you know, creating something and creating a model for something, effectively, you, if you can create a proposition that comes in at 50% below London and also as, I don't know who it was who mentioned over here, as the actual costs, or as, sorry, as the speed which gets you across to the US for content, well, actually, you, what you're doing is you're creating a unique selling point for, for Wales PLC. And I think that's, for me, is really important. So it's actually creating that proposition for Wales because you want in with investors to come in. And then when you look at growth, I'll just, just finish, Jamie, but then when you look at growth around future internet, so think of data analytics, which is going to be huge around energy, huge around financial services and things like that. You're actually positioning Wales in a position where it can more than compete with elsewhere. London's got a problem. It has brownouts. For those who don't know what they are, it's effectively that you don't have enough supply of, of electricity to, to, you know, to, 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 meet, to meet demand. So it is about creating propositions for Wales. 
Thank you very much for a, a very good point, very well made, and thank you as well to uh, Steve. I've got to move on because uh, I've got a long list of questions here uh, that have come in on Twitter and email from people who are watching this on the internet. Uh, but you get first dibs. So the next question uh, here in the hall, I'm going to move on now uh, to, uh, to, to a fresh air and a fresh question. Who wants to, uh, to, to ask our next question? Put your hand up and tell us your organization and, uh, and where you're from. Anyone else uh, in the hall who wants to ask a question? Any more, any more, any more, any more takers? Uh, I'm going to move on to this list of the Twitterati. The Twitterati, this is just to prove that we haven't forgotten that you're watching. So um, we're, not, we're not cutting you out, and my apologies for keeping you waiting if you're watching on, on the telly. Um, I don't think I can read names, can I, because of um, DP issues, but the, the email and Twitter questions, and I'm going to bunch them up because there are a, a good handful of people asking the same question. Uh, why is rollout taking so long, and why won't everyone receive fibre broadband? So we're going to address those, um, because those were the first questions to, to come in earlier on. And I think uh, it's pretty obvious that the person to answer uh, this is uh, Ed Hunt. What's the answer? I, I completely get people's frustration about it. It seems like a, it's like a long time, but actually... The pace that we're going at through our uh, superfast broadband rollout is unbelievable. A fifth of everything that was done in the UK between January and March was Welsh. The, the figures are just staggering at, at the speed that we've rolled out this network. And let, let's just go through the steps to, 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 to enable one single green cabinet. You don't just sit, stick the cabinet on the side of the road and flick your, click your fingers and it goes live. You survey it, you plan it, you have to dig the plinth, you place the cabinet there. Now we know you all that, but the question is, uh, why, the why being, is it taking so long? That was the question. The point, the point being that every single one of those is a project. And I'll give you some examples as well. So I was just telling uh, 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 P Peter in the front row this uh, earlier, uh, uh, earlier on. An assembly member had written to me this morning because we're putting poles up outside people's houses. They don't want it. They want to stop us um, um, doing work. This is true. People, not everybody is welcoming of this. We are going as quick as we can. As I say, a, a fifth of everything that was done in the UK between January and March was Welsh. It, and, 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 and this rollout, uh, this is such a successful program, I'm so proud to be part of it. We've got a Welsh-based team, loads of Welsh speakers on our team, hope, uh, another plug for, uh, uh, for BT. I, I don't think it is taking long, but I do sympathise with for the people that are still waiting. And just to answer the second part of the question, um, why won't everyone receive fibre broadband? Well, we're going, well, Welsh Government's amb ambition is 96% when you take into account the BT's uh, commercial investments, Virgin Media's commercial investments, and the joint programme that we've got together. There's not an unlimited pot of money, but I think uh, Welsh Government have, uh, uh, Simon and I have had some conversations, there's some really radical things that Simon is thinking about to make sure that nobody gets left behind uh, uh, in Wales. And uh, I think over the coming months, you're going you're gonna to hear more about that. Okay. Um, any more questions in the hall here? I'm getting the, uh, the wind-up, the red light on the, the, uh, the monitor, so uh, I'm going to draw things to a close if there are no more questions in the hall. And apologies if you're watching online, but uh, we've tried very hard to uh, keep you involved throughout the day, but as ever, time defeats us. Um, thank you very much indeed, all of you, for being very brave and coming up here. And, uh, you want, or you want well, to make more I've Just a very quick comment on, on what's taking so long. I think that's a classic example of what happens when you wait too long before somebody wants something. It then becomes a problem, so that's why we don't want to wait. Yeah, no, it's, it's a very good point indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give our panel uh, a round of applause, please? Thank you very much. Simon, Ed, Giles and uh, Chris, thank you very much for, uh, for being such good fun. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, don't run away yet because I have one or two more things to tell you uh, as we end our final panel session of the uh, digital innovation stage at uh, Digital 2015. Uh, I would just like to thank all of our panelists, uh, our speakers and of course you, whether you're here uh, in the hall uh, taking part or watching uh, online. Uh, live or at a later time and making this such uh, an essential event in the UK's digital calendar. 
Uh, over the past two days, we've explored the uh, innovations and megatrends uh, shaping the digital landscape for uh, businesses and individuals and learned from global players and locally based trailblazers like the wonderful Digital Dozen, the uh, 12 companies from the area who we chose uh, leading the way on their use of digital technology and shaping not just this country, not just Wales, but the UK's digital economy. Uh, we've learned all about uh, the technology innovations about to impact our workplaces and we've I hope scratched under the surface of how they can be leveraged for economic gain. We've also, I think, had a great opportunity to uh, listen, learn and contribute to two fascinating days of discussions and talks delivered by, I think, world-leading technology experts and futurologists. So thank you all. If, if you're a, a business owner, a digital professional or just interested in finding out about the emerging areas of uh, digital, we uh, truly hope that um, attending uh, has helped you better understand your digital futures.